welcome back for another video. So this particular video is not one that I actually planned for this season, um, but because of everything that's going on right now, I've really like felt um, the urge and really felt um, like I really needed to record this video. Um, so as you can tell from the title, um, I am talking about homeschooling your kids okay so i know a lot of parents um have suddenly been put in the position of having to homeschool their kids now and so and i see a lot that are struggling with it so i wanted to just kind of you know share some tips and some encouragement um with that whole situation with me having already homeschool you know my kids i'm already homeschooling them um so just to give some ideas and some tips um on what has worked for me because it starts off as a struggle too so let's go ahead and just get started with that okay so first up let's talk about behaviors that's like the main thing or one of the main things that's driving parents insane they now have the kids home all day with this coronavirus going on and the kids are, you know, as we used to say when I was coming up, they off the chain. So if you are feeling like, like if you are trying to, you know, homeschool your kids and work with them with their schoolwork and it's looking and feeling more like this. Look, right here. Come, come do your work. Look, come do come on. One, two, three. How many books? Then I have some help for you, okay? <laughs> because what you want is your um school sessions with your kids to look more right. like how many books this? right here? Can you count them? One, two, three. Good job. High five. All right. I mean yeah. So, here's my advice. Number 1, patience. <laughs> I know that is like um I guess a difficult thing to achieve, especially if you already don't have a lot of patience, um which is why a lot of people are not teachers. Um because it takes patience, lots of it. Um, like I became a teacher and of course there's patience that's needed, but I figured that my patience and my tolerance level was at a certain point. That was it. I want to tolerate anything else. But once I began working with kids and teaching and everything, I realized that I actually have more patience than I realized. So with patience, um, sometimes you have to make an, a conscious, conscious, conch, conscious effort to be patient. Sometimes you have to just take that moment when you feel yourself getting like really, um, impatient and getting frustrated and getting really, really upset where you have to actually make yourself just stop for a moment and tell yourself, just be patient. Meaning, just just keep going. You, this isn't this isn't going to like just happen just like that. You have to tell yourself, "I would love for this to work out well, just like that," but it's not okay, and it's okay. So you have to have some patience, and you have to like consciously make yourself have some patience with your children, okay? Number two, along with that, take breaks. Yeah, take breaks. Know when to say, all right, you know what? Let's take a break, y'all. And, you know, and it's okay because, I mean, you're you're at home, so the structure of everything is it's on you. Um, and it's okay to say, let's take a break, okay? Even in the classrooms, teachers... We take breaks. 
sometimes, you know, in the classroom, we're doing so many things or we're working really hard at something. And sometimes we may have to just take a quick little break and, you know, let's play a quick little class game or let's play some music for like five minutes or, you know what, everybody, let's get up. Let's go take a restroom break or, you know what, let's have a snack break. It's okay. Take a break, okay? Because school work is hard work. It really is. It's hard work. So take breaks. It's fine, okay? Um, number three, along with taking breaks and being patient, make sure also that you assess the situation, okay? Don't just get frustrated and upset and mad because things are not going the way that you want them to go. Your kids are not behaving or performing the way that you want them to at that very moment. Um, because if they're not, of course, yes, take a break, be patient, but also you have to ask the question, why are they not doing what it is that I need them to do? Um, why are they not understanding this assignment after I've explained it several times? Why are they still not paying attention? Why are they still not listening when I need to need them to come and do this work? Why? So you have to ask yourself why, because even as a teacher, that's what we have to do. We have to figure out why are, you know, students behaving certain ways. And a lot of times it's not just, well, really, it's never just the kid just wants to be bad. <laughs> it's it's never that. There's always like some type of reason why. And um, so as the parent, you now have that opportunity to see that firsthand and take that moment to assess the situation. Why are they doing this? Are they bored with this work? Um are they just completely not used to it and they just need to be retrained and trained into a routine to um to get that, okay, this is what we're doing, this is what we're doing for now on or until such and such time, and I, I'm serious about you doing this. So are they understanding it, understanding the expectations um, or not? Um, is the work too difficult? Like, um, are they just really not understanding the assignment? And so now their mind is just like, oh, I want to go somewhere fun in my head, go to my happy place in my mind. Um, yeah. Um, is the structure not really structured? <laughs> um, so the way you have things set up, is it not really structured enough for your particular child? Um, like for you, you may say, this is what we're doing, go do it. But your child may need like specific, like strong structure to help them through whatever it is that you're trying to get them to complete. Um, so assess the situation. Okay. Um, ask yourself, why is this happening? Um, do they need snacks? Do they need some rewards? And that would be, um, another thing, um, Let's see, what number am I on? Number four. <laughs> so number four, you may have to redirect. So you may have to redirect. That means, you know what, turn their attention to something else. Um, if they're doing something that you don't want them to do, pull something else out or just turn their attention to something else. Make something look way more fun and bring their attention to that. Um also, it could just be switching things up. You're working on a math assignment and they're just like, Ugh. still just, they just, it's not getting, they're just, they're just not getting it yet. And you've been working on it and working on it and working on it. You know what? Let's stop with the math assignment for right now. Let's take a break from this. Let's grab a snack and let's go work on some reading. Let's how well you do with some reading. Let's do some fun stuff with reading or whatnot. And so, you know, have them do a reading assignment and they have to read it in a funny voice or whatnot. And you do it too. Have fun with them. Um, so, yes, yeah, so you have to switch things up and that'll help keep their, you know, attention. Okay. 
Uh, because also with children, you want to make sure that you're keeping their attention. And not only that, but you want to help build um, their attention span. So you want to go a certain amount of time, like pay attention to how long they can actually focus on something. And then the next time, go that amount and try to go a little bit longer than that and just help strengthen and build their attention span. Um, so then number five, this is where the rewards come in. So building um, their rewards or positive reinforcements. So with this, what you want to do is provide them with something positive or fun, exciting, food, snacks, they love that. Um, <laughs> uh, surprises, could be anything. Um, and at, of course, at this <laughs> moment in time, we're trying not to go out as much, you know, because people are trying not to be around too many people. So it's not like you're going to be able to run to the store for every little thing that you want. But you can have stuff that, you know, that you don't have to pay for. You know, if you can get this assignment done, then you can do this or you can watch this. Or if you get this assignment done, we're all going to play this game. Uh, or if you can complete uh, your assignments today with of 80% or higher, then you get to pick any snack in the pantry, something like that. You know, positive reinforcements, okay? Little kids love stickers. So make a sticker chart and just stick some stickers on some copy paper and tell them that they need to fill the whole thing up with stickers and they get a cool prize, a new toy or something, a cool treat, something. Um, any of that. <laughs> um, so that way that will really engage them and motivate them to do well on their assignments. Also, you can make the assignments fun, you know, um, if they're misbehaving. So come up with a real fun um, activity and, you know, okay, well, if you're going to behave like that, if you're going to keep talking or you're not going to listen, I got this really cool activity for us to work on. You're not going to be able to do it if you're acting like that. So use the assignments as a positive um, reinforcement. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So basically, you got to use a mind tricks on these kids, okay? Very, very simple. Very, very simple. So other than behaviors, another thing um, is the assignments themselves. How in the world do you teach it? Okay, so how am I teaching my students? I don't remember this stuff. Now I'm having to be the teacher. What in the world? <clears throat> so of course, yes, it would be easy. Um, well, it is easy for me <clears throat> to, of course, teach my children, you know, their assignments and everything because I am a teacher. And so I really know like how to just like that very quickly find resources and things like that. So I'm here to go ahead and share some quick resources that you can use during this whole coronavirus thing. So that way you don't have to go out and like buy stuff. Um, you can create things yourself and you can also just go online. One thing um, would be, of course, the teacher provided assignments and lessons because a lot of um, schools, the teachers are doing online teaching now. So they're logging on to, um, uh, what is it? I know some are using Zoom and that's what I use to teach online. Um, so Zoom and then uh, what's the other one? Um, it's Google, Google something. I can't remember what it is now. Um, but yeah, so they're doing that to actually continue with their lessons uh, with the children. So if you're actually having to be home, of course, then try to tune in and just listen and watch, you know, the lessons. So that way you're able to help your child um, outside of those video lessons um, with their assignments. Um, another thing I would say is that if you're even wanting to give them like some extra work or really like get them to use this time to work on some stuff that they need to really work on, like if they need, they have some gaps like in reading or math, 
like they're still like missing some skills that they haven't grasped yet, but they've still been getting by with passing with what they have. Um, the best way to really figure out or find out what exactly you need to work on with your child, I would say go to the website, Let's Go Learn. And you can order two assignments, you can assessments, you can order a reading assessment and you can order a math assessment. And both assessments, they range about an hour to two hours long, depending on the age of your child. The younger they are, they're about a, uh, an hour. The older they are, they can be up to like two hours to take the, um, the test. The tests are, they're not stressful. They're like very colorful, interactive. They're listening to questions and answering the questions. And it's just very, very, you know, interactive, engaging, okay? So what these assessments do is it in, it gives you the results and it tells you this is for each skill set in um, reading and in math. It tells you like their grade level for each skill. So for multiplication, it will tell you whether, let's say your child is in the sixth grade, it will tell you whether they have reached the sixth grade level for multiplication um, or if they're at a fourth grade level with multiplication or with um, algebra, whether they are at a fifth grade level or if they're at an eighth grade level, it's going to tell you those specific things. So if your child is in the sixth grade and they're scoring anything lower than sixth grade on any of those skills, those are the things that you need to work on. And then once you get that, then you can go and print some worksheets for them. So you can go to places like um, uh, mathdrills.com and get like whatever math sheets you need for whatever math topic. You can go to um, read works, get uh, reading passages and questions for comprehension. You can go to, um, what is it, K-12 Reading, I think that's what it is, or Reader, K-12 Reader. Yeah, K-12Reader.com. You can just Google these and find them. And K-12 Reader also has a ton of reading worksheets and different reading skills, you know, main ideas, um, order of events. Um, drawing conclusions, all of that, predictions, all of that, okay? Um, so use that to figure out what your child needs specifically in addition to what they're working on with their actual teacher online. And then you can use that to kind of really work on and build those skills. Um, also, for the really small kids from like ages two to age eight, you can sign them up for ABC Mouse. And they can complete assignments on that. Um, my kids have um, profiles on ABC Mouse. I have an account for the both of them. Um, so it's one account and it's for two kids. And I think for each account you get, I think maybe it's like one, it's either one to three or one to four children on that one account. Um, and it's $10 a month. Um and so what I do for their levels, for their assignments, um, let's say when you get to their learning path, it, the learning paths go through um, like different landforms, like different environments, habitats. So let's say you're in the rainforest. So you see the little character for your child and then you see a whole lot of little circles and each of those circles are the assignments. And they go all the way through the other side of the screen. So what I do is that each day, my kids are to complete that whole environment. So they need to complete all the assignments that's right there in the rainforest. And once they complete that, and then it takes, to, takes them to the next place, which may be the desert, then they're done. And they'll start on the desert the next day. Um, and so there's lots of assignments. So they complete the assignments. So there's, you know, with phonics and letters and numbers and counting and colors and all of that words, sight words, all of that math, all of that reading books, um, all of that. And so they have all of these different assignments. And yeah, plus ABC Mouse also have worksheets. So you can go and print even additional worksheets to kind of help work with your child with different things. Um, and one more thing that you can do for assignments, 
um, you can look up PowerPoints. So let's say your child needs to work on main idea. You can go to Google, type in main idea PowerPoints and boom, and find a PowerPoint and use that to work with your child. Um, yeah. <laughs> Have them like jot down some notes and then you can use it and create like some little quizzes or things like that or create, create, create your own little activities, things like that. So one more thing to help with homeschooling your kids now out of, you know, nowhere, just suddenly having to homeschool is the other big issue, which is time management. So a lot of parents are struggling with the time management. How in the world am I supposed to homeschool my kids and work from home? Well, I can help with that because I do that too. <laughs> I work from home and I homeschool my kids. So what I do with that is I just set a schedule. There's I put aside a certain amount of time for homeschool and I set my, um, my alarm on my phone for 10 o'clock a.m., to 12 o'clock a.m. and for those two hours we are working and when that alarm goes off AJ he knows that alarm and he's like oh, time for school time for school and so we'll go into the office and we'll work on our school work and when the alarm goes off at 12 then we know that okay we need to go ahead and finish up where we are we're not gonna just boom there's the alarm stop no we're gonna finish up what we're doing and then be done, okay? Because we don't want to stretch it out too long. And then, you know, they just get exhausted and they're not going to want to do it anymore. Um, so I want my kids to enjoy school. So I don't want to just keep at it where they're just like, they're just getting drained from it and just getting exhausted. Now, it's a workout now. They get worked because sometimes AJ, he gets worked. But by the end of our sessions, when he's able to complete that assignment, oh my gosh, he is like the happiest kid ever. He is so excited. And he's so happy that he did keep working so hard. Um, so yeah, so set aside some time for homeschooling. When do you want to set aside time for your kids to work on their assignments? And then what times um, do you want to set aside to work on your work for your jobs? So you want to first evaluate your time. So when the kids are going to bed, get out a sheet of paper, plan out the day. What needs to be done each day? How much time do you need to put for their schoolwork? How much time do you need to put for your work? So when would be a good time to put those time slots, you know? Um, yeah, so plan for school time. Plan for work time. So that way you're not trying to do all of that all at one time because then, yeah, you're just pretty much just setting yourself up to get really frustrated. Um, So schedule your day. Certain time, all right, so this, at this time we do this. At this time we do that. At this time we do that. And this time we do that. But don't plan your day like so tight that every single minute you got to be doing a certain thing because that's going to stress you out and burn you out too. Leave some leg room to be able to just, you know, if you need to have time to like, all right, y'all, we just need to take a break to take a break. OK, um, so, yeah, don't have your schedule so tight. Have it where, you know, you got some time here, give or take some time and some time here, give or take some time, you know. Um, and then that way, if something, you know, whatever, if someone has a meltdown, you you got some time to deal with that. OK. And get everybody to regroup and then go back and try your work again, you know? Also, with scheduling your time, don't forget to schedule in fun, okay? Because, you know, now we're having to really be cooped up at home with our kids. Have fun with them too, okay? Don't forget to schedule in some fun. Some time that y'all can just kick back and just watch a movie or watch some TV shows, you know, grab some snacks and y'all sit down and watch some TV shows and talk about them. Um, especially some shows that deal with like, um, uh, life events. So that way you can have those discussions with your kids because those are learning moments too. Okay. All of that is part of their schooling. They need to learn 
how to deal with different things. So be able to spend that time with them, have fun with them. And that makes the whole day less stressful too, because now you got something to really look forward to and you're having fun together. And then when you are working and doing schoolwork and stuff, you've built that bond that you, you know, you're having fun together and you like each other. And so now you can actually have fun and smile and enjoy doing schoolwork together. <laughs> okay, so hopefully those tips have been helpful. If there's anything else that is of concern or you would like to know, please put it in the comments below and I will be more than happy to help. Um, also, I am still available for tutoring um, and you can book me for tutoring because like I said, I do it online and yeah, I can get whatever materials together that needs to be done. If you would prefer that I do um, your child's reading or math assessment so you can get an idea of what y'all should work on at home, um, I'm available for that too where I can actually administer those assessments. And all you have to do is just book me at arlearning.org. And that's my, my um, tutoring website. And so you can go there and book a session and we can really get these kids where they need to be. All right. So I will see you all in the next video. Okay, okay, so I forgot to mention one thing. Um, when it comes to our kids and food, because I know a lot of parents um, <laughs> are buying up a lot of things at the stores or can't find a lot of things, you know, as far as food, because now their kids are home all day and their kids like to eat. So... My advice or tip for that is to <laughs> feed those kids like they're at school, okay? So set a certain time to eat and just teach them that they can't just eat everything just because they see it, just because it's there, okay? Um, yeah, so let's see. AJ, let me show y'all what I'm talking about. Come here. All right, so what time do we eat breakfast in the morning? When your alarm goes off in the morning, what time? Nine, nine, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. All right, so that's when we eat breakfast. All right, and then what do we eat after breakfast? What What is when we're done? When we're done with school, what do you eat? What do I eat? What do you eat? What do I eat? Do you have a snack? Mm -hmm. Yep, you have a snack. <laughs> and then you have lunch. Uh-huh. Okay. And so then, so you have lunch either at 12 o'clock or either 2 or 3 o'clock. Right? Like today you had lunch at 2 o'clock. I have 2 o'clock? Uh-huh. Yeah, I just saw my call goes 2 o'clock. So what time do we have dinner? Um, uh, Before bed, what time do we eat? What time it be? Six yeah, six o'clock. So, <laughs> so he knows that at certain times it's time to eat. So that way, because honestly, if I didn't set a certain time, they would want to eat all day, all the time. So yeah, so that's another thing. So put the eating on a schedule. All right, and Amari has something I need to go and take that out of his hand. So I will see y'all in the next video. <laughs> Bye and y'all stay safe, okay? <laughs>